Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to go ahead and edit your photos like Brandon Whirlfall. Now we've already done a video like this before but we've done it on Lightroom and today's video we're going to be doing it on Photoshop. So if you are new to the channel don't forget um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to be notified when we upload. Also go ahead and click the bell icon. It really helps us if you guys go ahead and subscribe if you really like these videos. We'll be bringing lots of videos for you um, this month. We're going to be trying uploading every single day for a month. So loads of these videos will be coming out for Photoshop and for Lightroom. So if you're new don't forget go ahead and click that subscribe button right now um, so you can be notified as when we upload a brand new video. Okay so before I jump straight in with editing this photo I would like to talk to you a little bit about our website. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a Photoshop preset pack which is essentially a bunch of actions that you can go ahead and you can click a button and it should make your photos look like Brandon Whirlfall, um, like in the style of Brandon Whirlfall but for Photoshop. And um, You will have to do some minor tweaking and that's the same with all these Lightroom presets but I'm hoping that you guys can go ahead and use that pack. Just purchase it on our website, we'll put it up over here um, you guys can go ahead and check it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this pack um, kind of in action at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and I'll show you guys what you can do with this pack. So you come to Window, click on Actions, and this is going to load up all of your, your actions here. So this is the Brandon Whirlfall style preset pack. You're going to get nine presets um, in this pack. And basically what you have to do is just click on the preset 5 here, for example, for this photo, and then just click the Play button. Now this will load um, the, the preset essentially. It's a little bit slower than it would be on Lightroom. This is an action. It's not necessarily a preset, but this is so you can go back and see all the steps I've done. You can go ahead and do some minor tweaking. Okay, so now it's loaded and it's done the final edit. So as you can see, that looks much more like Brandon Wolf's style. Um, it's basically just lightened up the shadows, gone for that pink and blue hues, um, bright highlights, faded out the shadows and put some clarity into the image. So with one click you guys can go ahead and just get the, the look you want if you wanted to go ahead and check out our preset pack. Okay, so if you're not going to go ahead and use those actions, what you can do now is import your photo into Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing to note is you probably want to go ahead and check him out on Instagram just to go ahead and get um, an idea, a rough idea of what his photos look like. So he's got lots and lots of different style photos, but as you can see, the most common theme that you can see is nice, soft, um, pinks and blues and purples and he plays around a lot with lights um, and stuff like that so what we're going to do is we're going to find an image that is roughly similar to the, the look we're hoping to get so for example this one here just neon it's only got one simple color in the background which is similar to ours there's another one down here as well and then finally as a final example there is this one here now this one is a kind of close representation to the image that we've got so we're going to be working off this image here it's not going to look um, exactly the same obviously but we're going to be basing ours off this look here okay so before i go into photoshop and start jumping ahead and editing there are a few important things to note before you start editing the first being um, the image size that he uses if you really want to copy his style which i do recommend um, just trying to come up with your own unique style but if you do want to go ahead and practice um, he does post his in this kind of landscape view where mine at the moment is in portrait. The next thing to notice is his actual editing style. So if you look at his photos, it is very easy to um, notice that he's put a lot of fade in his images. He hasn't got very dark shadows, as you can see um, in these plant pots in the background here. So he's done a lot of fade over there. He has, he's faded out his highlights as well. You can see they're not really sharp um, highlights. And what he's done is he's put on a lot of clarity in his photos. You can see this mainly in the hair. If you look at a lot of his images, there's a lot of clarity in the hair. I find one of the best examples of this is this photo here, which we are also going to be using um, to base our photo off as well. Probably this one more than the other one. But um, as you can see, he's got a lot of clarity in the hair, a lot of detail going on. He's increased his sharpness a little bit. But at the same time, his images come across as very uniform, clean, and kind of almost dreamy looking. So you can achieve that same look by decreasing the clarity. But we're going to do something slightly different to get the kind of smooth uh, look to our image without decreasing the clarity to lose this kind of sharp contrast in the hair and on the glasses and stuff and the highlights. So as well as that you can see that he really goes for the um oh just like this photo. As well as that you can see he really goes for these nice soft pinks and these really sharp kind of aqua blue highlights um, in the lights and stuff. Um, obviously this does depend on the photo he uses but lots of the pinks and blues as you can see in this one as well he uses quite often. So what we're going to try and do is try and replicate this look as we're going through just kind of refer back to his images. Okay so this is our image here. Now the first thing that I'm going to start um, showing you guys what to do is to open up the camera raw filter. So on a Mac you do shift command A and then it's going to open up this camera raw here. If you want to find, um, I don't know what the shortcut is on a PC but you can click on help and then just type in camera raw filter um, and it will bring it up for you. So once you've got up the camera raw filter the first thing to do 
is really look at your image and it depends which one you've got and that's why the preset pack is there it will work for lots of different photos whereas this one this video is mainly targeted to these kind of dark neon kind of colored ones but I'll try and give a rough idea of how to do this all of the photos and if you do want to stick around towards the end of the video I will give you a discount code at the very end of the video and you can get a little bit of a discount on that preset pack however the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to increase the shadows quite a bit just to get a lot of that detail back in the shadows. So now we've increased the shadows, we can get a little bit more of that detail back in the shadows. I'm also going to increase the exposure just a little bit as well. In his photos here, he's got a lot of detail in the shadows um, and the highlights are pretty bright. So now we've got a lot more detail back in the shadows. I am going to put up that contrast just a little bit to about plus 9. Um, leave the exposure at about plus 0.90 um, you can adjust your temperature and tint depending on your image if you need to make it more blue or yellow but um, the white balance of this image is pretty much perfect so I'm just going to leave my ones as they are then the highlights I am going to bring those up a lot brighter here as you can see they are a little bit overexposed in the top here but we are going to be kind of fading those out a little bit with our tone curve later on same with the whites just going to bring those up a little bit more probably to about plus 40 that is just so we can get some really harsh um, highlights. We want to be careful though that you're not overblowing the highlights as you're working through this. Okay, so the next thing is the blacks. Now, if we look at his photos again, he does have some quite dark blacks that are faded out. So what we're going to do is we are going to decrease the blacks a little bit just to get a little bit more contrast back in. Because if you brighten them up too much, you're going to lose a lot more contrast. And as you can see, we're getting a little bit of noise in the image. So you can either go either way, but I think if we put it down a little bit, we should get a nice fade in the image. So we're going to put that about minus 18. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics um, of the image done. And I bring out here, you can see roughly before and after at the moment. You can't really see them at the same time, but um, as you can see, there is a bit of a difference going on already. So the next thing we're going to do is increase that clarity. So you don't want to increase it to 100 because it looks really weird. But again, if you're into it to about plus 5, plus 6, you're not going to see much. So I like to go to about 20, 30, um, depending on the image, to see what you can get out of it. So I'm going to go with about 29 at the moment. And then the next thing we're going to do is the vibrance. Um, we're going to bring down the vibrance a little bit. And then we're going to bring the saturation up, probably to about minus 4 and about plus 4. This is a very subtle change, but it really does um, add to the image. Actually, looking at that photo, I'm going to bring down the clarity to about plus 23. Okay, so there we go. You can see already we've got a really nice look to the image. It's beginning to look a lot more like Brandon's photo. However, as you can see, we've got the high clarity, and as I said, um, you're getting a little bit of noise in the image. So as soon as you look at Brandon's photo, this is really soft, dreamy look at the same time as having a lot of clarity. So we're going to try and get this look a little bit later on, so do stick around until we get that look. Okay, so don't press OK and continue on to the tone curve. The only problem with um, using this camera raw filter, it is, it is destructive editing, so you can't really go back and change what you've done. So take your time um, and work through it and make sure you get the look you want. So what we're going to do now is just put in our three dots for our standard S curve. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on bringing out those shadows um, just to give us a little bit of a fade in the image. So we can put a dot here, drag it down a little bit. That's a little bit too much. You don't want to look um, too much like a really high contrast cartoon look. But you definitely do want a lot of fade um, in those shadows if you can get it. So just get something that works. That's working kind of all right. Maybe a little bit too much, but we can always go back and adjust that later on. Bring up the shadows here just to get a little bit more detail in the shadows. Now these are the mid-tones. So we're going to bring those up just a small amount, too much, and you start getting this really weird x-ray look. But then again, too far down, and you get something really weird. So it's very minor adjustments with the mid-tones. Again, same thing with the highlights. You go too high, you look really weird. Too low, it looks really weird. So these ones, very subtle editing, but a little bit more up there, and then we're just going to fade out the highlights a little bit. So you can see really sharp, overblown highlights. Um, but if we do fade them out a little bit more, we get a closer to Brandon Waffles look. Okay, so that's beginning to look a lot more like Brandon's style. You can go ahead and change your red, green, and blues um, separately, but I usually just leave it as RGB and don't mess around with the other ones too much. Okay, so the next thing is the sharpening and noise reduction. So remember I said we want to get that dreamy look, but at the same time trying to keep our contrast and our clarity and our sharpness to the image. So the way we're going to do that is increase our sharpening. We don't want to increase it too much that it looks really, really weird. But um, we do want to increase it probably to about 20, 30. Um, 25, 26 is, is about right. The radius to about 3. That brings it onto the person's face. 
um, leave the detail and masking as it is. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to bring up the luminance quite high. Now as you can see already, that's really smoothed out the background. Um, if you bring it up too high, you get a really nice soft looking image, but you lose a lot of that detail um, that we've tried so hard to keep in the image. So I'm just going to leave it probably at about plus 25, 26, um, and then we can always see if we can adjust it later on. And then I think I am going to add a little bit more sharpening back into the image just to get those eyes a little bit clearer. So leave that at about 41. Okay, so this is essentially the hue, saturation, and luminance panel that you would have um, in Lightroom. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust each of the hues separately, then go to saturation and luminance. Now with this particular image, we have a lot of reds and a lot of blue and aquas. We don't really have many yellows, greens, um, and purples, but again, if I get around to it, I'll see if I can edit another photo. But um, what we'll do is try and adjust each of these colors essentially to get the color that he usually puts in his image. So the reds, we want to make a little bit more pink. So bring it down to the left a little bit, not too far, but uh, probably to about minus 50. The oranges, um, there are a little bit of oranges in those reds as well as you can see in the middle. Again, I'm inclined to bring that to the right a little bit just to add a little bit more interest to the image because otherwise it's too like two tone, too flat. So I'm just gonna bring it up to about plus 20, plus 30. Uh, plus 36 is okay. Yellows, again, there's not really gonna be much, maybe in a hair a little bit, but um, as I said, not really much in the image. So we can put that back on zero, leave the green to zero. Now the aquas, you can try and adjust, but aquas are really hard to find in certain images unless you already have that teal look. Now blues, however, we've got a load of blues over here on our left, on our right hand side rather. So we can make those really teal or we can make them really pink. So both of these looks will work for Brandon's style, but what I would suggest is uh, think about this carefully because you have a lot of pink over on this side. So if you bring it all the way to the pink, everything starts looking a little bit strange. So you want a little bit of contrast to your image. So I'm going to bring it down to probably about minus 15, minus 14, maybe a little bit less. And then with purples, that's going to either bring it to really a nice, like a cool aqua, or you can bring it up a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to bring that down probably to about minus six. Magentas. I'm just going to bring it a little bit more towards the purple side as opposed to the reds um, just to get these top bits here and the bottom bits just to get a little bit more um, of a varied look. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. I'm just I'm debating whether I think we'll just leave that as it is. I, kind, I quite like the teal look but at the same time I kind of quite like the blue look so somewhere in between 15, 16, whatever works for your image. Okay, so that is the hues. The saturation, not really much that we can do with it. We don't want to bring the saturation down too much. And again, we don't want to bring it up too much. I'm just going to bump up the saturation of the reds to about plus eight. And the blues, I don't want to bring those up too much because it's going to start becoming a bit overbearing. So I will bring those down probably to about minus 10. A little bit counterintuitive, but um, it hopefully looks a little bit more natural. Luminance, bring the blues up a little bit. So we've got a nice bright light on her face just to brighten up the image. The red you might want to bring those up as well um, just to make it pop a little bit. Plus 14. I'm going to bring the blues down a little bit and put it about plus 10. Nothing too drastic. Um, magentas, again, bring up a little bit as well. Okay, so that's the HSL sliders all done. Now we're going to come on to split toning. Now this is a little bit um, sketchy where he changes the highlights and the shadows for pretty much every single one of his images. So for this, I would recommend choosing what works best. So you can either go for the, um, you can hold down Alt. So you can either go for the, um, to get this that full color, you can either get the teal kind of look, you can go for the blues or the pinks, or go for the um, kind of the yellowy kind of colors. So leave your saturation at about 15 and then slide through and choose the one that works best for your image. So this is on the yellows. It's looking a little bit too gray at the moment and a little bit strange. Um, but at the same time, if we bring this over to the blues, everything looks really blue, and if we bring it to the pink, it makes it look a little bit like too flat and a bit too kind of grey looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt, um, bring that probably to about 39, 40, but I am going to bring down the saturation only to about 9 or 8. Shadows, we're going to put the saturation up to about 12, and then we're just going to drag this across probably to the blues. Um, hold down Alt again, and there we go. Beginning to get a lot more like his style. And again, I'm just going to bring those down to about nine. So very subtle difference, but um, definitely worth doing. Leave the lens corrections and the effects alone. 
and we're going to come into camera calibration. Now you don't really want to do too much with this but this can just help you edit the red, green and blue primary just to kind of get a little bit more towards that look. So you can either go for the whole orange and teal look by bringing it to the left and then bringing your red primary to the right uh, but as you can see that really makes the image look rather strange so we're not going to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the red primary and we're going to bring it down a little bit just so we can get this nice pinks going on down here. Probably it's only to about minus 10, minus 8, something like that. Nothing too drastic. Um, the red primary, we're going to bring a little bit more towards the aqua side, probably about minus 3, nothing too much. Green primary, um, we don't want to bring to the left. Um, this, The green primary just really depends on your image. But um, for this one, I'm just going to bring it to the right, only just a bit, about plus 2. Okay, and then that is about it. Okay, so that's perfect now. So what we're going to do is just click OK. Okay, so there we go. Immediately you can see the edit um, that we've gone ahead and done on this image. So the first thing to notice is there is still a little bit of noise in the image. Um, but again, that depends on how you zoom in on the image and how the quality of your image, what it, what it looks like. But you can always go back and add a little bit more noise reduction in just to get rid of those um, really harsh looking grain going on on your image. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import the image again so you can see the before and after. Okay, so at the moment this was the before image and then this is the after. So you can see a big difference um, at the moment. So I'm just going to compare this to his actual photo on Instagram. Okay, so as you can see we've really gone for that nice um, teal looking colour and the nice pinks at the same time as on our image here. The only difference being her face in this one is very blue. Um, and in this one it's kind of a little bit more pink, yellowy, kind of more natural coloured. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and correct that by making her face a little bit more natural coloured. Okay, so to bring a little bit of colour back in, what we're going to try and do is we're going to come down to Photo Filter, and then we're going to put it on Warming Filter. Now, obviously if you leave the density on zero, it's not going to do anything. If you put it on 100, it's going to make everything nice and yellow. So this is to try and warm the image up a little bit. So I'm going to put the density on about 13. Um, nothing too drastic at the moment has changed in her face. Okay, so this is really hard to try and get the skin colour back to a nice um, normal skin colour, especially when you look at the original photo when it's already pretty blue. So um, you can go ahead and see if you can adjust the hues of certain colours like the yellows and the reds for example, but in this photo there weren't any yellows and reds in the original photo so there's not really much we can do to bring back the skin colour. But having said that we have got a really nice uh, neon look to this image. Okay, so that is essentially it in terms of how much editing um, you can go ahead and do to get Brandon Wuffles kind of style look. Um, what I would recommend doing at this point is if you can download um, any um, stock images or take some images of your own of like lens flares or anything like that. So for example, if you look on his photos, he uses a prism when he uh, creates his photos and just try and get some really interesting effects. So for example, across her face here, she's got like a rainbow color. Um, lots of different interesting effects can be achieved and you can get lots of bokeh and stuff. So Download any stock images um, you want um, and see if you can place those over the top. Alternatively, use the photos that you've got of your own. Okay, so that is basically how to edit like Brandon Wolfel on Photoshop. As I said, you can go ahead and try and purchase our preset packs. So I hope you have enjoyed that. Um, I hope you've learned something as well. If you have, uh, feel free to post some of the photos on Instagram and I know um, send us the link so we can go ahead and check out some of your edits. It'll be really interesting to see what you guys are doing um, on Instagram. Um, but then again, thanks for watching guys, um, I will put a discount code, as I said at the beginning of the video, it should be on screen now. Um, go ahead and use that discount code to get about, I, I'm not going to, um, it'll be on the screen now, it should be about 10 to 20% off um, of this um, actions pack. It's not going to cost a lot, but it should be pretty helpful and I hope you guys, you'll, you guys will like it. So again, thanks for supporting the channel guys, I really hope you guys um, enjoyed and go ahead and subscribe and check out some of our other videos. I'll see you in the next video guys, live long and prosper.